Hey what's going on everyone, Vasco here and welcome to the channel. So today is the first video where I record my face so let me know what you think about this style of video. So today we're going to talk about Rake and why teams just can't change it overnight. So you may have been hearing from Otmar Zafnauer, the team principal over at Aston Martin, that they think that they were hindered by these regulations more than other teams because of their low rake approach. So what is this? The rake, you can think of the rake as the angle of the floor between the front and the rear wheels. So you will see on the screen a car with a low rake such as the Aston Martin or the Mercedes that pioneered this and you can see a team with high rakes such as Red Bull or Ferrari. There are two clear aerodynamic uh, purposes here. So the purpose of teams with a low rake is to make the floor as flat as possible and as long as possible in order to make the, the rear diffuser work best. Whilst the teams with a high rake uh, use the floor as a diffuser. So by making the car tilt they have effectively what is an exp air expansion zone underneath the car which creates more downforce. For a, a number of years now Mercedes has run with a low rake whilst all the other teams have run with a high rake approach. Recently in 2020 with the tracing point, uh, racing point now Aston Martin copied the Mercedes design which involved the, the low rake approach which I think honestly that they didn't understand when they copied. Mercedes and Aston Martin with the low rake and they are the teams except the exception of Haas who didn't develop their car that lost the most in 2021 and why is that? In order to explain this better I need, you to, I need to introduce to you to two concepts. So firstly is the token system. As you may know due to the COVID-19 restrictions Formula 1 has put a two token per year limit on what teams can do with the cars and most teams including Mercedes and Aston Martin have already used them. And why is this important? This is important because in order to change the rake, it you just can't jack up the rear suspension to the max. You have to develop an entirely new rear and front suspension. And this would take tokens and they don't have them. And this would also require changes to the chassis in order to have new mounting points to the for the suspension, which they also can spend. So this is one of the first issues. But the second issue, and the one I'm going to focus more now, is aerodynamic. And this has to do with how Formula 1 cars work. So in order to explain this better, let me make a drawing. So here you can see a wing. Of course that in Formula 1 and in every other form of motorsport, the wing profile would be inversed compared to this. Because this is a wing designed to create lift and not downforce like what you would want in Formula 1. So why is this important? So in blue you can see the air lines which are called streamlines and it's basically the direction that the air is flowing. So the air is flowing from the front to the back in this direction and it's uh, going through the wing. So the, there, there's a characteristic of a wing that's called the cord and this is a line between the front and the rear of the wing as you can see in red. And the angle that this line makes with the, with the airlines is called the angle of attack of the wing. And this is one of the reasons why you cannot just jack up the suspension on a car. It's because you would change the angle of attack of every single wing. So what would be the effects of changing the, um, the angle of attack of a wing? So let's see. Let's move these blue lines in, into an angle and see how that effect changed the, what that effect had on the wing. So firstly, that's talking. So firstly, in terms of drag, so I'm going to represent drag in green, and you can see that when the air was hitting from this direction, the area that the wing had in contact with the air was just this, the frontal area, was just this bit in green. Whilst now that the wing is in in this tilted position, all this surface is being hit by air. So the wing, the area of the wing, the frontal area has changed drastically within this change. And this is very important because there is a direct relation to drag when it comes to the area. So you have just increased the drag of the wing a lot. But also by changing the wing angle, you may have noticed that the air is not flowing in the way that the wing was intended to. And this will change the properties, including the downforce and the drag of the wing. So the wing may simultaneously lose downforce and increase the drag, which is the worst combination possible in Formula 1. Well, a team like Mercedes could surely develop new wings for a season, and I would agree with that, but the problem is more deep than that. Because once a team like Mercedes decides that they are going to pursue uh, a new wing angle and that they are going to change the aerodynamics, they cannot just change the front wing or the rear wing. 
There are a lot of aerodynamic structures in the car, including the barge boards, the front wing, the rear wing, the diffuser, uh, the, and even the body of the car and the winglets you see all around the car. Those all work as a structure and not as a unit. So if you decided that you're going to change the front wing, which is a, um, the first part of the car that comes into contact with the air, you may be surprised that, that by making a new front wing, the rear wing and the car loses performance even if the front wing concept is better. And this is one of the reasons that you don't see like uh, Alfa Romeo copying the Mercedes front wing and putting it on their car. This is the reason that Racing Point had to copy the entire Mercedes car and not just the front wing, the rear wing or the brake ducts. Now you get a picture of how complex this, oh, this change would be. So you would not only have to change the suspension, the, the chassis and the floor design, which is uh, something you cannot do now except the floor design, which is something you cannot do under the token system. And you would also have to change every single aerodynamic surface of the car in order to, to change the airflow. So, because if you think with the car with, with a low rake, you can think that the aerodynamic surfaces and the body is like this, it would be like this if you tilt it. Whilst a car like Red Bull can be designed to have the aerodynamic surfaces like this, even if the floor is like this. And this is one of the main reasons that Red Bull have such an, have such an advantage. Because since the cars with the high rake were already used to having a less effective diffuser and having to work more the floor as a diffuser instead of the diffuser itself, they adapted better to this regulation set. Which doesn't mean that teams like Mercedes and Aston Martin cannot fight if they develop properly. I mean, Mercedes just won the first race. So this means that if the FAA did what Otmar Safnauer is suggesting that they made it on purpose to hinder Mercedes and the low rake teams, well then, very good job FIA, the racing is very close and it's very good to see uh, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen fighting, it would be very good to see uh, Sergio Perez and Valtteri Bottas fighting and you can see that the midfield is so close, so this year they, they nailed the regulations on the head and I think that they did a very good job even if the low rake teams aren't very happy. But the best thing that they can do is develop their car around their problem and trying to solve it without changing the rake of the car because this would be very very complicated so hope you guys enjoyed this more technical minded video i'll be doing these sorts of videos every once in a while every time a new concept worth exploring comes the next one i think will be the venturi tunnels that will be ever so present in next year's cars so if you like this video don't don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and i will see you in the very next one bye